a castle, a dancer, a betrayal. The story and history of one of Elden Ring's most hated areas, the Shaded Castle, is just as tragic as your first few attempts against Elamir of the Briar, but also just as interesting as anything else to come from the Lands Between. Bear with me on this one. I hope it all comes together for you at the end. I always welcome you to share your thoughts and or how they may differ from mine in the comment section as there is pretty heavy speculation in this one, but a lot of in-game evidence as well. I promise you're going to want to see how this turns out. Our story here begins with the Golden Order. The Golden Order is essentially a set of beliefs manifested or imposed unto the lands between by Merica and Radagon. To oppose the Golden Order is to oppose the Greater Will, and those who did so would be severely punished. One such group of NPCs you have likely already heard some background on are the Merchants, you know, like Calais. These Merchants once thrived as the Great Caravan, but after being accused of heretical beliefs, their entire clan was rounded up and buried alive far underground. Then, they chanted a curse of despair and summoned the Flame of Frenzy. For those of you who don't know, you find the bodies of the buried alive merchants as well as the nomadic merchant set in the subterranean shunning grounds near Leyendel. The same path you meet the Three Fingers and initiate the Frenzied Flame ending. Now clearly whoever was in charge of the order to bury the merchants missed a few because we are still able to find some throughout our journey. Merica and Radagon most likely knew there were some heretical merchants still about, and so they brought in the big guns. An executioner named Elamir from a lesser, long-vanished domain known as Aokaid. If we take a look at the Briar Helm, an item you get from Inia after defeating Elamir, it says Elamir murdered numerous instructors and merchants and was known as the Bell Bearing Hunter. Now, you know that Elamir is kind of a big deal because he is considered a champion and you can buy his gear from Inia. That is pretty atypical in this game unless you're a shard bearer or a demigod. All right, so now moving on, the second half of Elamir's title, The Briar, is explained to us in the very same helmet description we just looked at. It says the winding rusted iron briars are the mark of the guilty and typically indicate a sentence of death. Why then is the Golden Order's own hitman now being sentenced to death himself. There are a couple of possible reasons. One I've seen on the internet and I personally don't subscribe to unless we find more evidence is that the Golden Order wanted to cover their tracks and rid themselves of any loose ends, so to speak. I don't think this would be the case though as we are dealing with literal gods and they wouldn't really need to explain themselves or fear retaliation. Their say would be considered absolute. The second option, and the one I find more likely, is that Elamir became overcome by bloodlust. He no longer was hunting the merchants he was ordered to. He was now aware of the presence of bell bearings and would hunt anyone who had one on their person. Proof of this can be found in game as he appears at Warmaster's Shack, where you can find Burnhall, who is not a merchant, at least not of the same group as Calais. Elamir's killing spree earned him imprisonment in Briars and a trip to the subject of today's video, the Shaded Castle. The Shaded Castle has no disclosed lord within the game, but the longtime Castellans, or governors of the castle, were the Marai family. They did not only watch over the castle, however, they were also executioners, and most likely representatives of the Golden Order. We can see this if we take a look at the official's attire and compare it to the Marai robe, the chess piece you get for defeating Malay Marai outside of the Shaded Castle. They're identical except for the black mantle across the shoulders of the robe from House Marai. We'll get to Malay here in a minute, but the item description of the official's attire says the following. Grubby blue robe worn by magisterial officials to carry out their grim tasks. Surveillance, executions, gruesome rituals, the darkest duties drive the wheels of mankind. How do we know this is connected to the Golden Order? Other than its location, which is just outside of the Divine Tower of Altus and the Grand Lift of Rold in a secret room that is initially blocked by Morgoth's seal, let's take a look at the word Magistrate from the official's attire. A Magistrate is a civil officer or a lay judge who administers the law, and in this case the law is the Golden Order. We can look at the Shaded Castle as a place the Golden Order would send its most dangerous or possibly most secretive executions, hence the name Shaded or Veiled. 
a place to carry out sentences in a choice location, something similar to Rikers, Alcatraz, or the pit from The Dark Knight Rises. The Shaded Castle sits near a massive cliff with one main entrance on a bit of not so fertile land as it is literally in a poison swamp. What are you doing in my swamp? Speaking of poison swamps, this is something I really couldn't find a backstory to. We do know that all sons of House Marai are sickly born. Could this be due to the conditions of the land? Obviously, the area is in much worse condition than it was prior as we see buildings sunk down into the poison. But other than something farting out a bunch of poisonous goo onto this area, it makes sense that over time, the overall poor quality of the grounds eventually got the better of the castle as all of its residents perished or possibly became statues. Also, why would this only affect the sons of the house? This makes me feel like some sort of curse was involved, like millennia's rot. Oh, and uh, we're getting there, I promise. Trust me, it's going to be good. And something that the children are intentionally infected with? Maybe it's a side effect as carrying out the duty of executioners of such powerful prisoners. I mean, I'm sure there's bound to be someone that can set a curse or two in that lineup. I would love to hear your thoughts on where the poison came from or how why the statues got there. It is worth noting that the statues throughout the castle are the same five models repeated over and over, so I don't believe that they were once actually residents, just a weird choice of decor. You can see further proof of this if you visit the room with Elamir, you will see the same statues lining the walls. Anyway, that's not even the fun speculation, so let's move on. Remember where we were. Elamir of the Briar has been wrapped in the thorns of the guilty and sent to the Shaded Castle to be executed by Malé Marai, the current Castellan of the Shaded Castle. To carry out these executions, the family passed on a sword from generation to generation. You guessed it, the Marai Executioner's Sword. Somehow, either during his imprisonment on site, or right before the actual point of getting his head chopped off, Elamir was able to snatch the sword, and he imbued it with battle skills from his homeland of Aeokaid. This is where things get interesting. The art of this blade, when you obtain it after defeating Elamir, is Aeokaid's Dancing Blade. Don't forget that this is also the area where, if you're doing Patch's quest line, he will give you the Dancer's Castanets, as a quest item to deliver to Lady Tanith. I knew this wasn't the only place I had seen dancing in Elden Ring, so I did some searching and oh boy, is there some dancing in this game. The first thing you may think of, and it may be just a coincidence that it is another weapon art, is the Waterfowl Dance, the weapon art of the Hand of Millennia. Now let's make some obvious connections here. Millennia's portrait is in the boss room of the Shaded Castle, and we learn through several item descriptions that Malé Marai was unhealthily obsessed with Millennia, who he thought to be his personal goddess. This is why you find the Valkyrie's prosthesis for Millicent's quest here, who I did a whole video about, and it actually spawned this video. Please feel free to check it out after this one if you haven't seen it already. Malé kept this prosthesis around because when he embraced it, he claimed to feel Millennia's presence. Keep in mind that this is Millennia's old arm and not the one that she currently has in the Halig tree. This is important. However, if you look around the portrait, you will see other prosthetics as well. And throughout the hall, we see Clean Rot Knight armor. As for the prosthetics, I believe these are simply replicas, an attempt to either recreate the original Valkyrie's prosthesis or bait to fool anyone or anything who might come searching for the Valkyrie's prosthesis. Regarding the Clean Rot Knight armor, these could be trophies from all who have attempted to steal the prosthesis or collected armor in an attempt to outfit the Mirai forces in the Clean Rot armor to show their dedication to Millennia. This would explain the Clean Rot Knights we find at the castle. They are likely searching for the Valkyrie's prosthesis in order to retrieve it or to specifically keep it out of the hands of someone. Maybe Millicent? But I digress. We must now ask ourselves, why did Malay Mirai believe that Millennia was his personal goddess? And no, I don't think it's for the same reasons you think Quelag is yours. Remember the theme of dancing I brought up earlier? Another item you get in game is called the Blue Dancer Charm, and it tells the legend of a fairy who bestowed a flowing sword upon a blind swordsman who was able to seal away the ancient god of rot itself. Now you may already be rolling your eyes saying, but Precision, we already know that Millennia was trained by the Swordsman in Blue. Well, ha! Because what if I told you that Millennia is the Swordsman, or rather, Swords Person in Blue? I'm going to go ahead and get your next argument out of the way real quick. Let's look at the Flowing Curved Sword, which relates directly to this tale, and is likely the sword mentioned in the Blue Dancer Charm. 
It says, Legend speak of a master of the sword garbed in blue and his curved blade that was patterned after flowing water. Strong attack unleashes a series of strikes akin to a dance, offering a glimpse into the legend. Yes, the description specifically mentions his, but something tells me if this translated from its original Japanese, it would not be so specific. I just recently watched an entire Bloodborne video I'm sure you've seen that shows how there are multiple instances of localization where general personhood gets defaulted to he or some sort of masculine leaning term. If there are any native Japanese speakers who have a really good idea of localization and interpretation, please reach out with your thoughts on this. For now, let's take a look at why I believe the Swordsman is in fact straight up Millennia. 1. The fact that the Swordsman was blind. Well, have you seen Millennia before she puts on her helmet? Holy crap, she has no eyes! This connection is simple enough to make, so let's look at number two, the sword. Millennia's current blade is called the Hand of Millennia, and the description says, blade built into Millennia's prosthetic arm. Her current prosthetic arm. Remember the Valkyrie's prosthesis, or her old arm? I'm going to say that the flowing curved sword is the blade wielded by Millennia before she got this fancy new upgrade that is, quote, resistant to rot. You know, a quality of the unallied gold that the entire army of the Halig Tree is decked out with to defend their sanctuary. Another link we can make between the flowing curved sword and Millennia is by comparing it to the Shamshir, which is wielded by Millicent if you fight her as an NPC invader. Other than some aesthetic changes, the major curves and offshoots on the blade line up quite nicely. Millicent is of course the daughter, or at least some sort of direct budded offspring clone type thing of Melania, so it would make sense they would wield similar blades. Did I mention both use the Waterfowl Dance weapon art? Meaning Melania and Millicent with her Shamshir. And finally, let's look at where this sword is found. That would be the Consecrated Snowfields, which is literally the path to the Halig Tree. If you accept my explanation, you then need to accept that Millennia, with the help of the fairy who bestowed her with the flowing curved sword, is the one who was able to seal away Rot itself from within. That is until her battle with Radon that forced her hand and caused her to unleash the Scarlet Rot upon Caelid, Radon, and also herself. Thus causing the first of the three blossoms that would ascend Millennia into a new goddess of Rot. There is something I must return to Millennia. The will that was once her own. The dignity. The sense of self that allowed her to resist the call of the Scarlet Rot, the pride she abandoned, to meet Radon's measure. Enter Malay Marai, a Castellan who loyally served Millennia's parents by way of administering the law of the Golden Order, but whose entire male lineage is inflicted with sickness upon birth, not unlike Millennia with her rot. Malay Marai felt this connection with Millennia and was seeking to do, I believe, one of three things. Please go ahead and let me know down in the comments which you think it was, or if you have another theory. Theory 1. Malay was simply seeking to follow Millennia through worship, and was hoping to gain, through knowledge and the help of holy artifacts, a la the prosthesis, the ability to seal infection away within himself. We are led to believe through the Mirai robe that Malay was deceived, the word used actually is beguiled, and this deception would have been that Millennia did not actually rid herself of the rot, but rather simply suppressed its influence temporarily, thus removing all hope of removing the Mirai sickness. Theory 2. Malay was looking to heal his family's sickness through Scarlet Rot. Referring back to the Antspur Rapier, it says, Scarlet Rot is an old legend of which Malay Mirai of the Shaded Castle was a private believer. This could mean that Malay Mirai believed that the Scarlet Rot was a cure to his sickness, and this deception of the Rot God to inflict his own people with the Rot would have left the castle devastated and vulnerable to take over by Elamir. And finally, Theory 3. Malay came for millennia, but stayed for the Rot. Meaning, the beautiful guys of Millennia led Malay into some sort of trance that then got him obsessed with Scarlet Rot. This led him to fashion a blade that could himself inflict it, thus giving him a taste of the power Millennia had when she blossomed in her great battle with Radon. This is my personal favorite of the three, but like I said, I'm super curious to know what you think here. And there you have it. My official breakdown and theories concerning everything Shaded Castle. Thank you for everyone who requested this from my Millicent video. What lore questions do you want answered in a future video? Let me know down in the comments as I love researching this game and uncovering new ideas to share with you all. As always, if you found this video enjoyable, please slap that like button so YouTube shows more folks. 
If you're new here, hello and welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the content and want to see more lore videos in the future. I stream every single night over at twitch.tv slash precision, so feel free to drop in and say hi, let me know what you're playing, or drop your own theories that we can talk about live on stream. Thank you for the continued support on this series and my content. Take it easy, friends, and I will see you in the next one.